briefcase, briefs, and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. In 1968, the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit presided over a gripping case involving false imprisonment. At its core, the case boiled down to this. Even if someone did not mean to keep a person in jail, they could be held liable if they failed to investigate why the person was being detained. The case began when William Whirl, who was wrongfully arrested for felony theft, was left languishing behind bars for almost nine months, despite all charges against him having been dismissed. This egregious blunder stemmed from a lamentable breakdown in communication between the district clerk's office and the sheriff's office. Following the apparent dismissal, Whirl took action, embarking upon a legal battle against Kern, the sheriff of Harris County, Texas, and the Fidelity and Deposit Company of Maryland, the surety on the sheriff's official bond. The charge was that of false imprisonment. However, in this first round of litigation, the jury sided with the sheriff, finding that Kern was not negligent and ruling that Whirl had suffered no damages. Not to be deterred, Whirl fought back, appealing the decision for a reversed verdict and a new trial concerning his damage claims. In a remarkable turn of events, the Court of Appeals sided with Whirl, finding Kern criminally liable for false imprisonment. Kern's lack of involvement in the initial arrest proved immaterial, as his failure to verify the authority under which Whirl was incarcerated was heavily criticized and deemed to be a clear failing of his responsibilities. As a result of this verdict, Whirl won the right to seek damages for physical and mental injuries suffered during his needless incarceration. Furthermore, the Fifth Circuit determined that the initial ruling might have been an error, specifically in the disallowed consideration of the loss of Whirl's artificial leg in assessing damages. The court clearly outlined that Whirl's obligations to mitigate damages only came into action if he was aware of his injuries and deliberately or carelessly neglected to protect his own interests. This simply was not the case here. Whirl was unable to argue for his own release due to his incarceration. In conclusion, the once seemingly simple case of Whirl v. Kern had evolved into a landmark case, setting a precedent for future cases of false imprisonment. The Court of Appeals reversed the initial decision, ruling Kern liable for false imprisonment, and remanding the decision back to the lower court for further review. The gripping case served as a stark reminder of the potential consequences of procedural blunders in legal systems. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Visit lse.law. Elevate your mind. Leave the stress of class.